Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles and one party member is missing. No! <laughs> What a twist. I'm David Knight, your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by everyone apart from Ben. So say hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. Oh, no. Then we miss you already. <laughs> Good riddance, I say. Just, uh, yes, for everybody listening, uh, Ben is away touring the United States with his incredible show, Dragons and Mythical Beasts, for the next few months. So he'll be hugely missed here, especially when the party have to make an investigation role. But apart from oh, that, oh God, we're all God. incredibly <laughs> jealous of the fact that he's off touring the States. Yeah. And by the time, though, this is actually coming out, he'll be back. <laughs> he'll be back. Yeah, which he is will. Not by <laughs> <enough recording. laughs> Swibbly wobbly, timey wimey soup. <laughs> he'll be sat there with his smug abraca lad face listening to this. Exactly. Yeah. Going, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Oh, they've missed this. That. What's that hyperconductive <laughs> alloy you were playing with and he got it all wrong? Oh, no. I don't know why Ben is so much camper when we do impressions of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we see how the Abraca Labs survive? Abraca Labs? What am I saying? Jeez. Yeah, we've all turned into Labradors. Lab- yeah, Abraca Labs, you're now dogs. <laughs> uh, shall we see how you all survive without your favourite artificer? No! Yes! yes. yes. Sure. Let's cue the theme tune. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice. Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice. Seize your sheets and d20. Let's play D and D. Your haggard character swaggers with daggers in each hand. You've all discussed what you must, but even better lay plans. Take a turn when checks are missed. Roll initiative. Brandish your blades. Don't fail your saves. No risk too great, no choice to roll. So, nestled in the tipple in Vernock Rise, you freed the spirit of Petrogranius from her bell jar prison. Thankful for your aid and eager to retaliate against Adathal Chargelt, who had stolen her body, <sighs> Petra listened to you all explain the current situation. She confirmed that Chargelt had been in regular contact with Wingthrop and Hastan, before then helping Orin decipher the Henge research documents. The documents revealed that Chargelt was both trying to reconstruct a Henge to understand it better, whilst also attempting to figure out a way to make it transportable. In deciding to contact Klain to update him on what you'd all discovered, Enkidu realised that Alcibiades had used a page of Orin's notepaper. Enkidu quickly spoke with Hina, who promised to find out more, and during this inside check, Petra seemed to have an awareness of Hina's presence. After receiving word from Klain, you rested a while, with Juna chatting about Petra's childhood in Twaintide, Gwendolyn and Enkidu talking about an old acquaintance of his, Orin reading through Venestad Alessius's compendium, and Gaius going to explore the many pleasures of the temple. You decided to head toward the Twaintide Henge, and on from there to find Geromir Hastan, with Petra offering her skills in teleportation to make the journey that much quicker. The only issue is that she needed a body in order to cast the spell. Orin's intelligence made him the prime candidate, and after he'd sent some messages to friends from the Woden Isles, Petra possessed Orin and teleported the party to a field near Kissing Beck without him. And that's where we pick it up. So you find yourselves in long grass. You get the impression it's some kind of like farming field that you're all like secluded in. What are you doing? Screaming into the ether. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it! 
it. <laughs> Gwendolyn's just kind of going, Orin? O- Orin, is, is he definitely not here? I, I think... I think we kind of expected this. I should pull something like this. I am going to cast Sending. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good shout. Good shout. <laughs> that is the first thing that I am going to do. So... Uh, I've been thinking about this. I've got I've got a message ready to go. Okay. <laughs> cool. Sure. Vicky. There's, there's a bullet already loaded in the chamber. Yeah, that folks. efficiency is sexy ass. Yeah. Mm. Um so yeah, Juna will take a moment to gather herself and then she will send ascending uh to Orin saying, Looks like we're near that henge. Where are you? Are you okay? Are you with Petra? We can come and find you question mark. <laughs> Question mark is two words. <laughs> That's still under the word count. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, so yeah, you reach out, you send this like this panicked message, and you hear Orin's voice come back. Juna, I'm okay. I'm with Petra. We didn't travel anywhere. Petra needs my help. She'll get me back to you when we're finished. Stay safe. That's it. That's that's all you hear back. <laughs> What do you mean, that's it? <laughs> no details! <laughs> 25 <That's> words! The... <laughs> I can't incite Juna's sending. Oh, oh no! <laughs> well, he seems to be remaining out of choice. We should probably trust him. Let's just remember here that this is a a, a powerful mage who um, is, you know, not meant to be you know, where she is, and, and, and she's got all these, like, you know, things she's got to achieve and stuff, and we know these people. They are just out for themselves. How can we trust this person in our friend? But but the sending didn't come from Petra. The sending came from Orin, and we do trust Orin. Yes. That's what we have to remember here. True. It, it, is that how that works? That you could, like, contact Orin, that Petra Orin? Well, I'm guessing... He received the message where she wasn't possessing his body. Did it sound like him from your point of view, Juna? David? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd say it sounded like him. And in the sort of aura sense, it felt like him too. Like, for instance, when Alcibiades had like taken over Enkidu, there was like a definite edge to it. Like, it's like it sounded like Enkidu, but it felt like Alcibiades. And in this, it very much sounded and felt like Orin. I trust that it is our Orin. How about. I message him from time to time and we, we check in with him just to make sure. But I don't know about you, but I trust our Orin and that was our Orin. And also we need to continue playing the game while Ben's away. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ben? Um... <sighs> well, regardless of the situation, he's now hundreds of miles from where we are. so. Even if we were to try to ascertain wherever he, they were, we'd take forever to get to them. Yes. We're back on foot. We don't oh, have we any are. fast means of travel. We don't have the homeward door key. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not like we'd want to use it anyway. No, that's true. On the subject of which, I've been getting a little, uh, a little more and more panicked. So Heron knows something very secret and, and very sort of deeply deeply personal to me and I am very I'm very worried about this sort of loose end in Heron and I I I don't I don't think we should trust him I can't get through to Kierda because of the nature of our magic and it it doesn't rest easy with me that that we don't know who Heron is anymore we we know that he's involved in the Children of Havoc but my my worry is that he now knows uh, about me being one of the petals and and I'm worried about what is going to happen next <sighs> there's a lot of different threads and strings all crossing and jumbling up and I agree I'm very scared of what could happen next in all the different things that we're dealing with but if we think about them all at once, I think it might overwhelm us and we won't be able to do anything. Agreed. Let's take it one thing at a time. How about we get to the nearest town first, as quickly as we can. It is pretty dark and it's cold. We're in the middle of a field? Yeah. 
what can we see, David? <laughs> just long grass on all sides of you. <laughs> um, the sky is clear, though. It's night. You can see the stars oh. and the moon is out, which is very nice. It's, le- it's sort of giving you just enough light so that you can see some things around you, but it's really just grasses and, and, and vegetables. Right. David, I can't determine this necessarily. Mm. I don't know how much Guy would know this. But can he determine by the position of the stars whether we are north, south, east, or west of where we were? Oh, make a survival check. That's a great question there. Also, we knew where we were getting teleported. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you knew the rough area. But yeah. Whether we believe mm. that she sent us to Yeah, the right I just want to just triple check we've been, like, not completely Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a 5 plus 5, so that is a 10. A 10. Yeah, you don't know a huge amount. You can't really be 100% certain, but like, you know, there's the odd constellation that you're aware of. And yeah, you, you may be further south, but you can't be 100% certain. Okay. And it's Crownswood where we were supposed to be going, isn't it? Uh, you were heading toward Kissing Beck. Kissing Beck, that's uh, it. But yeah. the Crownswood isn't far from Kissing Beck. It's, no. It's, it's pretty close. And we were going to go and try and find the Henge there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can we see any, like, uh, evidence of there being settlements or a town or anything yeah if you start like pushing your way through the through the long grass trying to figure see something that's not just vegetation after a while you do step out onto a little path uh, which again it's sort of all fenced off and you can tell that this this sort of like more dirt path is just between fields and as you sort of follow it sloping downhill slightly you reach a bit of a view and you realize that you're kind of surrounded by farms and different fields and there's like sheds and little outhouses and things dotted around these fields but beyond that what you can also see is two rivers crossing and meeting ever so slightly in a, in a kind of an x shape ahead of you on the far shore the one directly opposite you can see a town with like little lights sort of dancing across in like odd odd little windows and things to the to the mm-hmm. east is some more settlements, slightly more sparse, but you can see that there is some the odd candlelight there, even even at this late hour. More eye catching is that to the west, the um, the shore there between sort of two paths of this river, um, slightly slope up into hills, and those again are filled with it looks very thick in vegetation, but right on top of one of the hills, almost like silhouetted by the moonlight, you can just see. A little circle of stones. Mm. Oh, okay. snap. Well, she did does well by that. Well, she was true to her word. She got us near to what we were looking for. And I, I did believe her when she said we were on the same side. It's just that she was holding something back. And yeah. she wasn't willing to share that with us at the time. Yeah. Orin does seem like he's all right. Yeah. He doesn't seem scared. He seems like himself. And so... There's no reason not to completely not trust her, but mm. I don't know we should trust anybody anymore. No. I suppose he's kind of enjoying having a consortium member mentor. Well, yes. Yes, it's a good point. What about our immediate situation? What do we want to do? Do we want to find lodgings and get our bearings first, or do you want to go up to the hench? I think lodgings is a good idea. I have some things that I want and need to do. I need to get my head around Heron, and I need to contact Ginger personally before we even talk about what we want to do as a group, and I'm assuming that you all have things that you want and need to do as well. Yeah, yes. let's, let's, I... let's find somewhere safe to stop and think. Do you... What if we... It's a clear night. What if we went and camped at the Henge? I would be up for that, definitely. I'm not opposed to that idea. I feel yeah. like it was a safe place for us before with Rowana, and I I feel to be so close to it and not go to it straight away, just, uh, yes, I just, I'd like to go there, please. I am well up for that. There might be some, like, interesting juju going on around the place at night as well. You never know, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm still worried about Oren, but I-, I trust your judgment there, Juna, and, you know, I I think you're right. I think he's the only person who would look at this and see a, a silver lining of, hey, I get to, you know, mm. be head-to-head is the phrase, maybe? <laughs> to, with the Head in head? Head in head with a consortium member? I don't know. but Brain mushy. Uh, <laughs> if you get a good feeling from it, I get a good feeling from it. And I think you're right. Maybe the, maybe the henge is the best way to go from this, you know? It's the Sorry. clear path. Grace, did you say... Brain mushy. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> Definitely. So I think that. that needs to be a canon word now. Brain mushy. Brain mushy. <laughs> yes, they Goodness brain mushy me. together. That's what happens in Enkidu's head. <sighs> brain mushy <laughs> together. <laughs> that is just Speak. Grace being a twat, not Gwendolyn. I apologize. <laughs> Speaking of brain mushy. I love it. Um, to the hinge. Uh, Gaius yeah. just looks at Enkido's head like, and just pictures soup just swirling around in his eyes. <laughs> you feel <laughs> someone else looking out through the back of his head right back at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of brain mush, uh, Enkido knows that Gil once took a trip with a certain squad through Kissingbeck to Brigadia. Can Enkido make an educated guess that between the settlements below us is in fact kissing back uh yes i'd say between yeah mm. between his knowledge of gill's travels and petra's description of two rivers kind of meeting yeah and also the map that you've got um yeah. you're more <laughs> convinced that the like sort of further settlement is ki- is kissing back itself and like the the sort of the, the houses to the east mm-hmm. they look a little bit more sparse you're not sure whether or not they're still part of that town or whether like whether or not it's overflow or they're actually a separate settlement, you can't quite tell. Mm. But yeah, you're you're pretty certain that you're in kissing back. Right. Shall we uh anyone fancy a lift over to the henge? Let's go. What do you mean? I touch guy on the shoulder and a cast fly on him. Let's oh, just get a little head literally. start. <laughs> <laughs> and whoo, Superman takes. As they, off as they the go air. away, Juna just sort of looks at them, <laughs> rolls her eyes, shakes her head, looks at Gwen. And right. taps her on the shoulder and they fly away as well. No, yeah. actually, she's not doing that. Juna wants to keep her magic. I've got oh, okay. other things I need to... No, we're going to have to walk Gwen Soz. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no! I thought we are all going to fly. Sorry. No, Juna has, Juna has sendings she needs to do. Um, she's got her priorities. <laughs> Seeing that they're not following, Akini will fly back. <laughs> Oh no, I can't cast it twice in this concentration. You can't cast Never it mind. Twice. You can carry us. You can, you can carry yeah, I'll, them. Ca- I'll carry. I'll, I'll carry. Um... You'll just be a bit slower, but. Yeah, you know. I guess. <laughs> Who wants a. <laughs> Who wants a lift? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll swim by and, and pick up Juno, which I think is like canon, because Q, I feel like, looks cool when he flies. Mm. But I feel like Guy still hasn't quite worked out the balancing <laughs> act, so it's almost <laughs> like a. <laughs> right. He doesn't need to, but he just like, yeah, there's like a breaststroke. <laughs> um, should, I, should I just like piggyback or how is this best? Uh, whatever's comfortable for you. Like, oh. doesn't really make a difference okay, to me. Okay, well, I'll just, I'll just climb up your back then. I, uh, piggyback. <laughs> When's taller than the kids? It's hilarious. Do, do, do you All mind right, if I cool. put my arms here? Is, no, no, it's yeah, fine. Okay. It's fine. All right. Yeah. Cool. It's not like I have wings or anything. It's all right. All right, let's go. And conversely, Juna is very comfortable flying and just sort of grabs Gaius by the hands and they sort of start to look a bit smoother as they fly, albeit slower. Yeah. And Kiri's full stuff, is she? Like, <laughs> right. I don't think Gwendolyn's flown before. You know I was just thinking that. Oh. Yeah. She hasn't. This is her first time. I think she's just I'm maybe... sorry I denied you that, like, fully. And... <laughs> that is <fine. laughs> like, nope! <laughs> and of course it would be with Enkidu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Somewhere Myra's little heart starts fluttering. <laughs> oh. I think she just makes awkward small talk as she's just a bit freaked out by it, but trying to enjoy it. As they fly, June is going to ask Guy about the dragon porn. <laughs> um, I can, Guy, Guy, so I can almost imagine, like, you've got Ruana. Is she still in dog form as well? She's still like in sort dog of form. perched up and like piggyback on you whilst you're holding Juna. So like, <laughs> but, but sort of laboured, laboured with everybody. Yeah, whilst <laughs> kicking my legs. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I will tell Juna all about the porn. <laughs> <laughs> How interesting! Ooh. I know. You know, it just comes to me sometimes. <laughs> oh, you both know that we went to jail now, right? Oh no, Gwendolyn no, will ask. So oh right! Did oh, happen gosh. that night away. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Soz, yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. Then true. Juna will ask Guy, and then Damn presumably it. when Guy brings it up, then she'll ask about. Are we flying co- close enough to Guy to message me about our plan, <laughs> about how we reveal this? No, <laughs> we're not. That's Yeah. So it's a little bit of a slower flight, but it's quite gentle. Um, and as you're sort of in Kido, you're aware that you're about to run out of time before you start all plummeting to the ground. Um, you do sort of lower yourself just onto the other side of the short of the of that river, mm. kind of halfway down a hill. But as you're getting closer and closer, you do realise that the vegetation is much the same right the way across these mm. hills, and they're kind of stepped out a little bit to use them as fields. 
And as you sort of land in amongst all of these plants, mm. there's quite a, a soft aroma throughout all of them as well. Mm. What What is the aroma? Well, as, we as soon as Juna lands, she's like, oh yeah, this is tea. tea. Ah, oh, of course it is. <laughs> We're near Twain we Tide, aren't we? Yeah, we are. The tea fields. But yeah, so you land in the tea fields and sort of start pushing your way through all of these plants, trying to find uh, uh, the paths that they'd use to, to harvest these these bushes hmm. and make your way slowly up to the top of the hill towards the henge. How long is the walk, please? It's probably about sort of a 15, 20 minute climb. Quite a gentle, gentle climb. Can I send another sending while we walk, please, David? Absolutely. <laughs> did uh, did Enki do tell Gwendolyn what happened? Do I roll for this? Um, <laughs> you just decide. All right, I'm going to roll. If it's below, on a d20, if it's below a 10, he does, awkwardly. If it's above, nah. That's a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's about. I kid you not. Oh, and Keith's so got he's, all on it. So he doesn't. No, he said if he's below a 10, he does. But awkwardly, oh, if he, oh, it's above so a 10, he doesn't tea. say anything. Um, and I rolled a natural 20. So it's like. Oh, well, oh, yeah, back when I was at the palace, we roamed around the north of the city and just talking about absolutely nothing at all. Um, what <laughs> about Guy? Tell what, me. Does, what, does Guy <laughs> what does Guy share about there, Sojourn? Oh, I think I think it was very like a very little thing that like got uh, Gaius immediately into like spewing it. She was just like, so how was your day when we were separated? And then Gaius was like, well, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dish, and then dish, this dish, happened. Dish, and then this happened. But Inkiru said not to say this. But anyway. <laughs> da, 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 da. And Inkiru says, shush, we can't talk about this. But anyway. Um, but, Which he fully did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think I think maybe Guy will be like looking at Inkiru being like. Mm. <laughs> and Inkiru like mouths, traitor. <laughs> <laughs> Guys will be like, where was your character development? You promised us two episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I left it with you when I bought you pastries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. They were really good. So, and as they land, Judah finishes by saying, so so do you still get a shock in the bum at the moment? Or is that mm. gone? I mean, I, I mean, I'm a little bit of a masochist, but I don't want to test it out just yet. Um, <laughs> just give it like another like, how long have we got since then? It was a it was a twenty four hour thing, and it's been it's been a most of that. Yeah, by by morning, it'll be fine because it was given okay. to you like early hours of the morning as well. So yeah, you're literally into your last couple of hours here. Yep. Nice. I think Gwendolyn hears shock in the bum after dismounting or Enkidu <laughs> and goes back. Uh, Sorry, what? And goes to get all the gossip off Gaius as well. And Kidu like Homer Simpsons into the tea fields. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Gaius divulges things, but makes sure that Enkidu comes off like really well in it. Yeah. Which and, like, he does, was... right? Yeah. 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 The nature of the story. Yeah. It wasn't does. my idea. And, <laughs> and maybe I like I, I spin a slight tale of me being totally embarrassed by this, and Enkidu was like, "Oh, I shan't shame you." Or whatever to our <laughs> list of friends and stuff, and I just and I just talk about like I just thought I was being so responsible, and Enkidu said, "No, no, no, don't worry about it," and yeah, and so on. So I'm trying <laughs> to make Enkidu like act like he's trying to like lie in a in a in a way to like protect my integrity as opposed to like Aww. hide his. No. Well, I suppose that's quite honourable. <laughs> oh yeah, he's an honourable fellow, that guy, and very generous. Hmm. With pastries. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope Kasula enjoyed them because she took them off us as soon as we got back. <laughs> <laughs> or was it the faceless footman who took it? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. No, because Juna can now... Um, not Juna. Right, on. Ruana now knows the smell of the faceless footman. Great. That's very true. Oh, so shall I send my sentence? Yes, yes. go on. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. Vicky, you wanted no, to do that for a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about what Juna wants to do. Um, I love so it. she is she's gonna send a sending to Ginger, okay. who currently is now heading to the wrong place. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, saying We found ourselves in Kissing Beck, investigating the henge there. Do you have any advice? How far away are you? Can't wait to see you. So yeah, you hear Ginger's voice. Even though it's, again, it's this late at night, you can still feel as if she's like on the move. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But you hear that, she goes, oh, lovely spot. Save me some tea. 
I'll come find you. Uh, spoke with a nice bison who offered me a lift, so travelling a little faster now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> you say bison? Yep. <laughs> Lovely. A That's nice awesome. bison. So... She Ginger can speak to, to animals. bigger animals than Ginger. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did she say not far now? She's travelling a bit faster now. Travelling a bit faster. Yeah. But she hasn't said... <laughs> she entered the yeah, continent. Could she yet. give it? A... Oh, gosh, I can't. Well, she uh, was, I think a last couple of time days I spoke ago, to her, she was on the continent. Yeah, a couple of days ago, yeah. she was climbing uh, a mountain of some kind, wasn't she? It sounded... <laughs> So yeah, she's but she's on her way, and now but now that you've moved a little bit, she you know she's changing course and is coming to kissing Beck on, oh on her bison. On a bison. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ginger. Ginger on a bison. Oh, ginger on a bison guy. That's a name for a a, a porno. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought you were going with like the culinary, the dishes. I was like, mm, ginger on bison. That sounds delicious. No, you went very different. <laughs> Oh my gosh. June is a bit kinky guy. <laughs> no, I can tell. That's where they get on. She hasn't she hasn't had it in a long time. Oh my god. And has and has various Wait. Quirks. So we've had the ranger and the nymph. Now we've got the sorceress and the bison. This is a very particular niche. And she's not talking about actual ginger. Like. Okay. Could be a fictional character. As they're making up the, the final steps towards the henge, um, Guy will then just be like recanting like, oh my gosh, they did this service at the tipple? Oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> Amazing. And then this one, the girl, my gosh, she's like an acrobat. <laughs> oh, it starts to get a little bit too uh, spicy for Gwendolyn, so she'll move away a little bit because she starts blushing too much. She's just like, I don't know what they're talking about. And Kiri will like... After he slowly emerges from the tea field, <laughs> hiding just from the embarrassment of the, <laughs> just walking by himself, he'll like s- when no one's looking, like slowly hold out his fist towards guy. <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> um, what do we see at the end then? David? So yeah, as you kind of make your way through, you do eventually find something that's a bit more of a footpath, a main path leading up to the henge, and as you kind of edge on up and get closer and closer to it and again because it's it's sort of perched on top of this hill it's it's a really easy landmark for all of you to see um and all of the the sort of tea bushes none of them have grown particularly high so it's it's like a really good focal point for you but as you get closer and closer yeah you begin to see how small it is compared to the Lockholt wood henge um mm. and even oh. sort of the um sort of the reconstructed henge underneath Chargell Hall this one it's got its nine stones each of them just above Gwendolyn's head height, you know, with like plants and vines growing up and on around them. And it looks, it looks very, very beautiful. It's uh, like a little overgrown ruin almost. If you didn't know it was a henge, you, you just go, oh, look, there's some stones. That's lovely. What is interesting about this is you sort of like step up to the edge of it. Looking into the center, the stonework in the floor and, and amongst the stones looks a little bit more constructed for want of a better word like there's bricks almost like cobblestones mm. in a in a circular pattern that lead out from the edge into a hole in the middle of it all Ooh. do we see any sign of like recent activity um make a survival check for that i'll say a disadvantage because it is night time yeah mm. but i no, I Can Gwendolyn help do i have him? dark hair? yeah if you're all looking for it make then it's just straight. a straight roll mm. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Do I have dark vision? No, I don't, because I'm a half elf. What? That sucks. Do I have dark vision? I don't know. Yeah, I do. I do, do have dark vision, David. Do I have disadvantage if I don't have dark vision for 60 feet? Uh, yeah, it's, well, not if Gwendolyn's helping, but I wouldn't say that you get okay. advantage. Okay, just straightforward rock. Oh my god, it's five again. So it's <laughs> ten. Oh, no. So then. What you can tell is that there's not been a lot of grass growth in the middle of it. Mm. And again, there is this path that leads on the outside that looks like foot worn. And again, there's not there's not been a lot of grass. It's it's kind of down to the sort of like gravelly stone underneath everything. So you get the impression that yeah, probably quite a few people walk past here fairly regularly. But yeah, there's uh yeah, especially in the center of it. Like there's some like bits of grass and weed almost coming up through between the cobblestones, but the it's mostly it's mostly stonework. And did you say there's like a hole in the middle? Yeah. How deep does it look? As you kind of approach over, have you all like entered into the space, as it were, and you're looking For around? For sure. Yeah. Yes. 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 Once you'd sort of like yeah press in, that kind of 
aroma of the tea does seem a bit stronger, strangely, even though you're slightly further away from all the plants. Um, and as you, Juno, approach the that hole, it's pitch black further down. Hmm. But you can just about hear like the sound of like water. It kind of reminds you of, of almost like a well. How far down does it seem to go? You can't see the bottom. Does anyone have the light counter? Orin did. Um, I believe I do. The guys. Yep, I've got um, dancing lights, so I will create uh, four torch mm. lights within range, making them appear almost like glowing orbs of lavender, mm. and they'll just send them down. But I'll keep one above us just to extend the light around us. How far can they get from you? They can get 120 feet. Oh, oh well, they do go 120 feet. Huh? And I assume it just keeps going. Uh, yeah, and beyond that, you can see that is. There is a, a reflection of, of water even further beyond that. Just about catching the edge of the light. But the tunnel is deeper than that. Or this this tube, this hole. I relay that to the team. Given some time, I can I can change Ruana and, and send her down. Yeah. Is that all right? Why not? How often do you get to see underneath the henge? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. True. Or even better, I could just change myself and go down there. Well, it's safer to send Ruana, right? Yeah, well, but it's quicker for me to go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, fair, 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 fair. What would you go down as? Uh, some sort of bird. That can swim? Yeah. And breathe underwater? Maybe a duck? <laughs> How wide the the wide the hole's not very wide, is it? <laughs> the hole it's not hugely wide. It's probably about like a bigger than a dinner plate across. Like it, oh, wow. yeah, it's okay and, uh, enough that you could get a bucket down and back mm-hmm. up. But what? But there's like there's no like well like apparatus above it. What about if we lower down? Uh, I think you're right, Enkidu. What if we lower down Ruana <laughs> as some sort of fish maybe in a bucket lower her into the water and then see where she swims it was pretty far though wasn't it 120 feet beyond yeah. that i don't mm. know How if we've got enough I'd... rope i mean i could get down there and pop up if it was it's not wide enough for a human sized person is it no not quite you could get a couple of legs down um and yeah but your hips probably right. wouldn't <laughs> well i'm thinking of I'm thinking of i can teleport all the way down there I mean, I won't suffocate if I'm down there. Will you be able to get back up? Uh, in about an hour. <laughs> 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 I use half my magic to get in. <laughs> um, if I really want to know, I can teleport myself down into the water. And you can send a message to me and I could probably swim my way to a stream and then find my way to you later on. But that's only if we're super curious. I'm sure there's a more effective way of looking down there. I mean, I'm just thinking, what would Oren do? Well, he would cast detect magic. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> He'd want to know, though, what was down there. No. I want to know what's down there. I do. Yeah, me too. What about like an insect or something, like a dragonfly? Yeah, like a flyy insect. Yeah. That might be able oh. to fly just above the water once we get down that far. Miss Septum, could you polymorph me into something small? Yeah. I mean, no matter what happens, I won't, I won't drown. I don't need to breathe. And if I get in trouble, I can teleport myself back up as long as I can see the top. Oh, yeah, that's true. He doesn't breathe, does he? <laughs> no. Does he need to breathe when he's an animal, though? <laughs> or is he still not needing to breathe? Ooh. This is a Davidism, I think. Um, yeah. So he'd have to breathe as an animal, or like he'd breathe as an animal, but then, like you said, like if there were an issue, he'd then just revert to his own body, which will kind of like deal with any of those kinds of issues. Do you want to go down together, Enkidu? Sure. I can bring us both back up as well. Yeah. I can help if, if you want. I, 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 can, I can polymorph someone if you want, Juna. I've got, I, I, can, I can use it for both of us. All right. Go for it. <laughs> I hold my hand out. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want to turn into? Oh, um, I think fish. Insect fish, or fish? <laughs> fish is a good shout. Cause well, not amphibian, because if there's somewhere we can walk underneath it. Oh, that's a good point. Like some kind of toad lizard yeah something. yeah that's it because like, yeah. like if there's like a riverbed or oh. some kind of land at the bottom we can at least walk out or climb a can wall can they or breathe something. underwater though they can or swim 
Yeah, I know they can swim. <laughs> but yeah, I think frogs can, can't they? Frogs can swim and breathe underwater. How are you going to yeah. get all the way down there as a frog, though? You just drop them down the well. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just drop them over 120 <laughs> feet. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. I, think, I think a bucket of water lowered down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're we'll going to have rope. We've all had starter <laughs> kits and we've not done anything, right? Yeah, David, yeah, exactly. will you give us the rope? Oh, you've got rope on you. Yeah, 100%. You've got, you've got rope. Tie it all stuff. together. I, just, I was just like, you know, before you just say, oh, yeah, we throw two frogs down a hole. <laughs> and I say, well, nothing happens. <laughs> As they discuss creatures, Gwendolyn will start rummaging and getting everybody's rope yeah. and start tying it together and do something practical. <laughs> it's very Gwen, yeah. Yeah. So frogs then? Yeah. Yes. Frogs. Are you all going to be frogs? No, if if two of us go down and two of us stay? Oh, yes, yeah. I'll stay up yeah. here. I'll yeah. stay up here as well. Thank you. If needs be, I can alter myself and breathe underwater if we get split up. I've got that in my back pocket. Oh, so I really, really want to know what's down the middle of this henge. Can I, before we go down, David, mm-hmm. just make an arcana check? Because I feel like that's what Orin would do. And we should probably do that in the middle of a henge. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shot. That's 21. Mm. Ooh. So having a quick look at the stones, you do start to see some very similar patterns that were on the henge research. Mm-hmm. What, what are we going to call that? The the, the the research henge. Yeah. We'll say the research henge. Proto henge. Proto henge. Proto. I like that. <laughs> the proto henge. Yeah. Proto henge. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see some of the similar markings. They're a little bit more faded here, especially with the vegetation sort of growing over them. But yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, it's similar patterns. I get it. As for like an actual sense of anything beyond this sort of like tea aroma which, you know, gives its own sort of calming effect. There's no, there's nothing else particularly magical that you, pick, you can pick up on. And I don't know if this is the same check, but the markings are more to do with the proto-henge than the Tillisham henge. Um, some of the Tillisham henge ones, but then even the Tillisham henge was quite faded. So it wasn't cool. as obvious. But yeah, like now that you'll know, you have started to see a pattern of these like similar lines and like arcane markings. Yeah, you can sort of pick them out on the stones a little bit more. Cool. Uh, I was just wondering, I don't know whether Gwendolyn would remember this or she's not doing the check, but there was this like element that you kept on saying that we couldn't quite figure out when we were looking through the research. The ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not, it wasn't um, a marking. There, It was uh, like... A symbol that was being used throughout but yeah it was assumed that it was an entire thing is that symbol like visible anywhere no i'll say with the 21 it's not oh that was slightly more tied to some of the transportation stuff that they were doing and less in trying to understand the henge itself Mm. juna holds out her hand to enkidu (laughs) enkidu takes juna's hand and as they hold as they hold hands, they see from their hands start turning like webbed and have like sticky ends, and then it just goes up their arms and they turn into frogs. Amazing. Uh, what like vessel are you being put in? I'm assuming that we've got kind of like some tin cups. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tea drinking. Yeah, so they're kind of they're about the same size as a frog. Like we could probably it depends on how small the frogs are. They're relatively small yeah. frogs. They yeah. can fit. They can. So yeah, she's t- she's tied. Gwendolyn has tied one of those tin cups to the end of their very long, thick rope. Nice. With some extra things to act because I don't think a thick rope would actually fit through the handle. But you know, she's she's mm-hmm. she's improvised with some vines and stuff that she's found nearby as well. Love it. Made it as secure mm. as she could whilst they were deciding on the creature. Mm. Um, could you make a, so- a sleight of hand <laughs> check for all of the, mm. the rope tying? Yes, I can. Thank you. Beep, 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 beep. That's a tidy ten. Ten. You know knots fairly well, but maybe, you know, it's dark. Mm-hmm. And like you say, you know, you've got like a little space and you've had to tie a couple of lengths of rope together. Yeah. Um, my next question, Juna, the polymorph spell. Mm-hmm. How much of the creature's stats replace your own? Oh. oh, isn't it? Oh, you're not a druid, though, are you? Moon no. druid. Druids, moon druids keep their wisdom and their intelligence and their charisma. But I'm looking at frog stats now. The target's game statistics, including mental ability scores, are replaced by the statistics of the chosen beast. Fantastic. So, uh, Juna and Enkidu, as frogs, your intelligence <laughs> is one. 
<laughs> your wisdom is eight what? and your charisma is three. So that's a minus oh. five to intelligence, a minus one to wisdom and a minus four to charisma. Great. All we're doing is going down and looking, right? Yeah. Sure, but you've, you're, you're frogs now. How, how much frogs can keep those thoughts in their heads? I don't know. All you know is you're suddenly a frog next to another frog and you've been picked up and shoved in a cup. How f- how frog am I inside? You're pretty you're pretty frog. You're really frog right now. <laughs> I mean like everyone else inside is a frog too. What you don't you don't even know how to necessarily contact them as a frog. Oh wow, cool. You're a frog. No no. How hungry are you both feeling? Um I haven't felt hunger in a few months, so I'm a bit surprised that I'm mm. craving something. And something that's living, which is odd. <laughs> You hear some Oh, it's a familiar sound in the night time. And oh there's something near <laughs> tongue goes out. <laughs> <laughs> Swallows a mosquito. That shocks Gwendolyn, she starts slowly feeding them down the hole. <laughs> oh sure. gosh, they're so slimy. Uh, I want this plan to work so much, David. Don't be mean to us. <laughs> no, they seemed not... very much just like <laughs> frogs, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, don't forget to look down there and come back up, okay? We totally should have sent Rwanda down. <laughs> <laughs> They're just Ribbit. making a constant rip it. I don't think they understand so, those. Um, two frogs start uh, getting lowered <laughs> into the cup. Juna and Inkidu. Juna and Inkidu. <laughs> as frogs. Um, as frogs. Start getting lowered down. Now, it's quite a long way. And even though uh, Gwendolyn is being very careful with the rope, this cup does start like bouncing against the sides of this of this oh hole um i don't know if that's going to scare the frogs but i'm already regretting it <laughs> <laughs> no this is great let's this go how wonderful. much how much you both are panicking or how much you're like stay still don't l- jump about or you know you're in a you're in a a container that's bumping uh, quite heavily against uh rock and mud and roots and yeah how are you both feeling my fro- my frog was Born to go down wells. <laughs> Amazing. Focused frog. I'm very much focusing on digesting this mosquito. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, you get the sense that there are. There's maybe more insects down here, actually. It, it's gone very dark for you both. Uh, frogs do have dark vision up to 30 feet. Yeah, we researched that before we turned into frogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you kind of like pad about in this little cup. You hold on to the edge. Uh, like I say, yeah, there's like insects. You get, you, you think you might spot a worm at some point. It, it, as it gets lower down, the sort of calming feeling washes over you a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, eventually the cup hits uh, some water and starts bobbing. It's kind of tr- pulled a little bit uh, along. What are you both doing, my two frogs? And Kidu eats the worm. Eats a worm. Lovely. Juno goes to eat the other end of the worm. <laughs> she likes worms. The nice worm. And there's something deep, deep, there's something deep down inside of Froggy Juna that that feels really smug that Enkidu's ate a bit of worm. <laughs> you gotta give me that, David. Enkidu's <laughs> just funny frog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. engrossed in the worm. <laughs> Love it. Is it Lady in the Trap spaghetti? Or yeah, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> But with a worm. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God! So would like one of us just try to devour the other? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You both, and eventually one of you is sucking on the other one's head, oh, <laughs> trying to get the rest of the worm. Oh my God! And we don't have teeth either, so we can't just bite it and like let the other one have the other bit. You just bah, 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 bah. <laughs> how, how long Pac Man the worm between the two of us? Oh my God! Oh my this gosh. is not how I saw this guy. <laughs> my head. <laughs> it's exactly how I saw it. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, the cup like slowly fills with water as it kind of like hits this little streamy bit uh, down there. Again, I don't know whether or not you guys want to jump out of the cup, whether or not you want to splish, splish. stay in stay in the safety whilst you're eating your worm. Well, if the worm's finished, it'd leave because it can feel water all around it. Mm. So yeah, I think we prioritize water. eating the worm, don't we? Yeah, we do. <sighs> Um, what is down there, David? <laughs> um, it's kind of like not a constructed tunnel, but a, a natural tunnel with a bit of a stream running through it. Like there's not much of a, a ceiling 
sort of you, you kind of landed in a little bit of a pool but you can feel the water pushing you in one direction and you fe- you feel like you could swim down a little bit and like follow the stream along if you wanted to and can you do swimming <laughs> that's what frogs do they swim yeah 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 <laughs> Gina's following. <laughs> nice. Um, I mean, it's good to know Little frogs. Froggy frogs. Just being a frog. frogs are amphibious. They can breathe air and water. So, what are their colourings? Was their frogs? Well, that's a great question. I've got, I've got it in my mind's eye. What kind of frogs I've turned us into? A red-eyed tree frog. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Your classic frog. That one. Top tier frog. Oh, that that is top tier frog. <laughs> <laughs> can we be like? The Final Fantasy Seven frogs. When you get turned into a toad, there's some aspect of your character. It's so like Cloud will still have his big sword on his frog form. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine June has still got a purple cape. June, June, is, June is, no, Juna's frog has like markings all over. Yes, yeah. the tattoo frog. <laughs> yes, tattoo frog. <laughs> yes, tattoo frog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, I like that. What about Enkidu? Enkidu's probably got. Um, would his tattoo be on his back instead of his hand? Or would he have his, like, a miniature scimitar <laughs> oh. <laughs> stuck to his back? Yes, that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Adorable. This is amazing. Um, how, long, how, how long are you going to be frogs for? How long can you be frogs for? An hour. An, an hour. hour. Oh so, gosh. yeah, you kind of both dive down, um, and the stream, like, half pushes you and encourages you at the same time to swim in a direction. It's it's very dark down there. It, there it's it's very cramped. There are points that this stream almost gets to like a choke point uh, with rocks that like sort of you have to pull yourself through a little bit more. There are times that it does open up a little bit, but still like the force of this stream just carries you through. And again, there are very few spots in which you can surface from the water. It really does just keep rushing you through. Is there anything you're looking for? Is there anything that you're you're doing? What does a frog do when he's following the stream? I think he just swims, you know. I think they're just swimming. I feel <laughs> it's like a, it's a, you know, it's a frolicking yeah. a little bit with each other. You and know? they're kind of looking around. It's not, you know, looking around unfamiliar place. Like, what is this? Is there any more food? What's in the walls? Can it, are any tunnels for me to change direction in? Mm-hmm. Is there any plant life underneath the water? I guess yeah. would interest frogs. Yeah. yeah, there's some like mossier bits. Absolutely. Yeah, the um. Yeah, the rocks are obviously all quite slick. Uh, there's there's some roots that stick out that will occasionally look like worms, and you think, oh, more food. And then we like bite onto them, and then we're just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> at the side. Yeah, how so how do you cute. end? So how do you cute. end polymorph? <laughs> I can end it at will. Do you have the sense, presence of mind to do it? Yeah. That is something okay. that I, I will say. Yeah. But you are in very, very cramped spaces. Yeah, I don't think they want to, do they? No. No. Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. We hope you all enjoyed the gruesome adventures of Deacon Fireheart Buttons with special guest Sarah Gain. If you've been unsure as to whether you wanted to listen to it, horror is maybe not your thing, then you can check out the show notes where you'll find trigger warnings for each episode. And from there, you can make an informed decision on whether it's the sort of thing you want to listen to. But we are thrilled to be back with the main campaign. Thank you so much for bearing with us as we were managing our workload during June. Myself and Daryl have just finished an amazing tour of Sense and Sensibility. And Vicky and Ben are both rehearsing. Ben is in Twelfth Night for Open Bar Theatre, which opens this very day, this very Sunday, if you're listening to the day that this is released. And Vicky will be in Romeo and Juliet, which is opening at the end of the month. I've been doing costume day. David's been doing music, so we've been very busy bees. And Daryl is going to be up in Edinburgh this summer with Yippie Kaye. He's going to be performing the whole time. So if you're up there, do go and see him. The show is absolutely fantastic and he is incredible in it. It's a one-man show. It's a poetic retelling of the Die Hard film. So go and check it out if you're up there. Or make that the reason you're going up there and have an amazing trip up in Edinburgh. As usual, if you'd like to drop us a review, then please do so. And just hit us up on the social media, Discord, etc. But that's all from me for now. Let's get you back to the episode. How long are you waiting before you, like, pull the cup back up? My arms... 
getting a bit tired. Do you mind holding it for a bit? No, that's fine. I find this riveting. <laughs> <sighs> oh, he's been sitting on that one. <laughs> I just... Um, do, you, do you think we should just I've been, uh, bring it back home? I, I worry if we bring it back up, that's the one source of getting out of there. But, um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take over for a little bit, but um, okay. if you want, why don't you just like, uh, are you tired? If you're tired, why don't you get some shut eye and I'll just... Uh... It's just my arm, really. It was just in an awkward position because I'm like holding above there and it's just like long rope and stuff. So I just need to stretch it, you know, just like, oh, yeah. Give it to me for a bit, but what I'll do is I'll I'll, 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 I'll keep recasting every now and then the dancing lights mm-hmm. in a, oh, I know what I'll do. David, how much do I... I mean... Mm-hmm. I I don't want to metagame this too much. I want to do it almost like a... Like a glow... Like a glow... Glow... Uh, Stick? Uh, glow... What are they called? Uh, firefly. Firefly, thank you. Oh, I want, nice. Like glow worms. Yeah, yeah. I want to do it like a firefly sort of thing. Like just buzzing down below. Just to like... Let them know that... Oh, yeah. It's there. But I don't know if that's metagame, because I don't think that they're being frogs, but also at the same time, why would I do that if I think that they're froggy frogs? You know what I mean? You know they've gone down as frogs, yeah. and he is a showman. That is true. So I will do it. I'll just be inspired, and I'll do like, I'm going to send them down as like fireflies, just to just to like let them know, like, this is the exit route. Exactly. Yeah, 100% allow that. Very on theme. <laughs> Um, yeah, it gets it gets probably to about forty five minutes of of you two waiting up there, and there's no coming back. I definitely use the other arm as well to just like balance it out. Yeah, like you know, stretching and you know, you know, sitting down around the hole for a bit. Um, I'm a little bit alarmed. Juno's only got my estimation like fifteen minutes before she uh, pops back to herself down there. I feel like would I have the presence of mind as mind as Juna that like as it feels like it's getting to about 20 to 25 minutes to be able to turn back? Or is that gone? Um, Timekeeping. Vicky learns how to use Polymorph. <laughs> it's a spell you cast a lot. <laughs> That's the story of this episode, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I've never had to think about doing anything. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the thing. Do, do frogs have an awareness of time? That's a great question. I imagine they must do. I feel like Juna is learning this about this spell alongside. Yeah. Just because it makes me seem less mm. dumb. I mean, for basic needs like when to eat and have children and stuff, they, they must understand time. Oh yeah, and like a, like a seasonal. But I guess it's the thing of like she doesn't forget. She doesn't forget who she is. She doesn't forget who she is. But it's more that just like her problem solving and her self awareness is that exactly the thought processes are just muddied by the the capacity of frog think ribbit. Um. So yeah, you're still being junior. You still got that intention. I would say that you know that lots of time has passed and you have an awareness that like, oh, it's been a while and I've not eaten or like I've been swimming for quite a while now. I should probably rest. But yeah, you don't have an exact amount of time in your brain. Um, as the two of you are kind of like pushed about a little bit, you do end up in a kind of like smaller, muddier underground pond that doesn't keep pushing you through and it's kind of like wet soil above you 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 found yourself in this little there's a couple of little rocks that you can sort of climb out and sit on after a while but like you found a little spot that doesn't keep pushing you on at least let's hop out yeah yeah yeah. i don't know if it's swimming for today tired (laughs) ribbit just hop over to (laughs) the shore as it were of rocks and this is the other thing i'll say Obviously, Juna talks to small animals all the time, so I'm assuming the frogs know how to talk to each oh, other and communicate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah, because we're both frogs, so we speak frog language. Crook. <laughs> <laughs> shall we stop here and rest then, shall we? Yes, please. <laughs> Crook. <laughs> Crook. <laughs> Crook. Just hop out. How, how wide is the cavern? Uh, this little space that you're in. Um... Yeah, probably about a foot across. Ceiling? Mm, uh, probably about half a foot above you. Like I say, it's kind of like wet soil, compacted, but like you can see it's like sort of dripping a little bit above you. Mm-hmm. I bet David just last minute just went, oh, I'll put a well in the middle, just just for aesthetics reasons. <laughs> and then they jump down the well. Like, Did oh. I expect anyone to go down into the well? He doesn't do <laughs> stuff like that. There's a meaning to everything. <laughs> I'm worried that we're going to die down here, Daryl. I'm genuinely worried that we're going to die down here. And then we're going to have to explain to Ben 
how we died. <laughs> In the worst, useless way. <laughs> We went down a hole in the ground that wasn't even a well. In the middle, however, we were trapped into doing it because it's in the middle of the magic circle we're looking for. So, like, we got trolled. In. We did need to investigate it, but we 100% should have sent Ruana down there. Yeah, we should. <laughs> There's always going to be like a well. Ben would have said this or done this, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah he would have rolled in for the investigation of 45 and would have thought, no, there's nothing down there. Can I make an investigation check? Yeah. With my frog stats? Absolutely. It's a minus five, but go for it. With a minus five? Yeah, I can still do it, though. Yeah. I'm looking with her. I'll give you, I'll give you help. Advantage with a minus five. Okay. Oh, it's a 19. So with a minus five, it's 14. A 14. Okay, so, um, yeah. Thank you for the help, other frog. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> your, yeah, your natural froggy sense and, like, watery awareness. Um, you actually don't think, like, some frogs burrow, and you think you could probably burrow upwards into that mud. It's not... Yeah, that looks that looks like scrapable mud, you would say. I feel like other frog. What's your name, other frog? Do I know it's Enkidu? <laughs> I don't I don't know. You're at a minus 5, so however you feel. Oh my gosh. So other frog, who I feel like I might recognize in another life. Do you have a name? Um Ribbit. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ribbit. Frogs don't have names, right? Yeah, we don't know their lives. <laughs> all animals, all animals have names to Juna. <laughs> okay, it's oh, here we go. Um, it's uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> Great! <laughs> uh, I'm. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, it's not that. <laughs> um, anyway, shall we do some burrowing? <laughs> yeah, let's leave. Um, <laughs> Stop burrowing up. Stop pushing your way up. <laughs> this is a waste of time. <laughs> this is great. No, this is entertaining. Entertainment is never a waste of time. The fate of the world. <laughs> oh, we had the best intention. Daryl when we went down that well yeah exactly <laughs> it was a good idea yeah so yeah you start pushing your way up and as, as being these sort of more tree froggy types um, you do find some roots that you're like oh more comfortable I can grab onto these and pull my way through and eventually you kind of push through the mud pull yourself up through some roots and find yourself in another pool mm. um, and there's lots of vegetation around you and and there are some small swimming little fish as well that look pretty tasty. Mm. Well, we, we we catch some fish, right? Yeah, we're probably hopping over each other to get to the fish, though. Yeah. How much time has passed? Are we near the end of Polymorph, are we? Uh, yeah, probably close. Like, yeah, you get a sense uh, that sort of... Juna, what I will say is that as it's running out of the hour, you start becoming more and more Juna in your mind. So you're like, oh, wait a minute. It's like a slow process, a slow growing of awareness. Okay. Um, as you, as the magic is slowly running out. Yeah, I think as the magic's running out, she starts getting a bit more panicked and is like, because presumably we're in these small spaces, right? Mm, this one, you're not so sure. You just know you're in some, you're underwater again. Oh my gosh. So we're, un uh, we're at the bottom of a pool. You're at the bottom of some kind of pool, yeah. It's a bit brighter here. I think she's like, we need to get to the top. It's rah, but uh, calling you by your own name. <laughs> just to start calling, calling him the name of the ravens. That yeah, <laughs> David. When I think that like we're getting really close to the time, when it's like fifty minutes or whatever, mm -hmm. can I just like, oh, guy? I think we're out of range because it's one hundred and twenty feet. I'm just gonna cast message and be like, "How's it going? Have you found anything, or are you coming back?" <laughs> Daryl, can you just roll a d twenty for me? 10. 10. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it doesn't make its way through. Ah. Okay, Gwen, I'm starting to worry now. Oh, okay, at this point, Gwendolyn is, uh, has climbed up one of the henge stones. Nice. She's been basically trying to climb up them and then, like, kind of see if she can jump from one to the next well, to, like, pass the time. Yeah. So... Do you need me to check how that's been going, or can I just talk to guys? Uh, no, I'll let you do that. Just as your as your monkey acrobaticiness. Cool. Yeah, she's just been monkey parkouring, practicing some of her new like skills and jumping around on them, seeing what she can see. One one thing that I would say is that you're quite surprised at how sturdy all of them are. Oh, like there's not a wobble as you land on each one, which is 
it's comforting as you jump. Yeah. I wonder how deep these things go because they're... Uh, sorry, what was that guy? Um, we're getting to the end of the spell casting time and uh, I tried to contact them and then uh, nothing's coming through. Does it... Does it... I, is, I mean, your arm must be going quite numb now. Does it feel like they're in the cup? Do you want to try pulling them up? I try. And I, I gauge and I go, I don't... I don't think so. It's not like wriggling or anything like that. It's pretty just full of water. Yeah, you can feel the weight of the water and that's about it. Uh, pull it up and hope. I pull it up. Uh, and by the time it reaches the top, there's only a dribble of water left in it. I'll say as it sort of knocked its way right the way up. There is a bit of water in there, though. No. Nope. I drop it right down again. I leave the lights and go... Well, I'm sure whatever they're doing, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've probably got out of worse scrapes than going down a well, right? Yeah, there's no way. There's no way that this is going to be the thing that kills them. Like, come on. After all the things we've done, they're definitely not going to die because of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be really, it would be really bad luck, wouldn't it? Yeah, right? It would be weird. It would be so silly. But anyway, thank you everybody for listening to No Small Roles. That's where we end the campaign. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> no. Uh, as this air of panic starts coming in for, for Gwendolyn and Gaius, uh, Juna and Enkidu, you've sort of like you've swum your way up towards the top of this little pool. Um, and you know, your, your, your little eyes have popped out into, into the night air. And you know, it's quite a warm night as well. They're all hmm. big red eyes. Your big red eyes. <laughs> Um, and then all of a sudden you stop being frogs Poof! and you are two people sat in a little pool surrounded by tea plants. Oh, but up the surface on the surface. Yeah. Miss Setthorn, I think Sorry, I just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what were you about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was disgusting. Raw fish and worms. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Seen us vomit straight in front... <laughs> <laughs> David, do we hear any of this retching? <laughs> yeah, and I'll say as the two of you are sat in a pool as well, like a little pond, it's just all floating <laughs> on the water, oh, and it's God. just <laughs> surrounding you, um, which obviously kind of causes you to make more noise. So yeah, Gwendolyn up on the up on the top of the hinges, and Gaius hearing this noise further down the hill, you both kind of look over, and they're quite a way down. The two of them, they're probably a good like 10, 15 minute walk back down the hill. Uh, but just on one of these like sort of carved in steps is a bit more of a constructed pool, uh, with some, some plants growing out of it. And Juna and Enkidu throwing up in the middle of it all. Um, okay down there. Yeah, fine. Uh, that is the last time I polymorph for a while. Ooh. Yeah, we just, we could send Rowana for this kind of thing. Well, yeah. Yeah. I get this sneaky suspicion. They just use this place to make tea. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing here. <laughs> okay. You okay? Do you, do you need some healing? Do you need some... Uh, some no. Good. Coming back. Uh, Kiri will stand up. He'll tap the air and the dark little pool will open up. Mm. Um, and Kiri, one thing that as a sort of your, your portal... <laughs> opens up and i'm assuming you and juna walk through it yeah um as you reach the top of the henge you feel like you could cast another spell oh i uh seem to got a bit of energy back don't know what happened there as we whoosh, walk through the dimension door <laughs> huh that's interesting and actually juna as sort of in Kiri says that you actually get a similar feeling as well like even though you've just you know used some energy to, to polymorph you both. Hmm. It doesn't feel like you did. Oh. What? Wait, what? What's going on? Whilst our, whilst our journey down the well itself was fairly unsuc... Sorry about that. Unsuccessful. <laughs> I think we have learned something. I feel like I could do that all over again. I won't, but I feel like <laughs> I could. Hey, guys, do you have any water in that cup? Uh, yeah. And I will, like, pull it up 
and like there's like a little bit left, like enough for like a sip, I assume, David. Mm, yeah. Here you go, pal. I take a sip. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's very fresh water, is the thing. <laughs> it's, it's straight out of a spring. Yeah. Um, but as you drink it, like sort of you finish and it sort of sits in you for about five minutes, hmm. you start to feel like you've got even more energy. Like, as if you've just finished a short rest, you feel like you're ready to go at this point. Oh. Well, I think we got an inkling of what the henge does. I've got all my magical reserves back just from imbibing the water. Whoa. Wow. That's a big resource. Yeah. Where are the water skins? <laughs> well, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll get some of the water skins and, and, and stuff, um, I guess. Like, But also, do we kind of want to know... what? Well, is there anything to know more about the henge here? Why, we came here for answers and, and absolutely we'll use this as a resource and everything. But like, what's the next step for us finding out a bit more? Did you say Rowana can go down? I, I, I think, I think the aunt, you know, we, we went down to, to see if it, if there was anything magical down there or, or, or I, I guess, I guess what we could do is send Rowana down and she could swim. How much do we remember from being down there, David? Do we remember that there was a current? I'd say you remember everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you remember everything. So what we could do is send Ruana down because we, we weren't very good as frogs. I mean, we were amazing as frogs, but we weren't very good investigating as frogs. So maybe if we send Ruana upstream, we can see where this is coming from, or 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 if uh, is the is the magic coming from the henge into the water rather than where the water's coming from, or is it? A tapping point. I, I was I, I was going to say what you said just what, at the end there, Miss Septhorn. I think the magic is an effect up here. Oh, we're like one since we were turned into frogs together in Kidu. What a success after all, Miss Septhorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there an arcana check or something? I don't have any abilities for this. It's just sad. <laughs> but, but I, I, could, I could make an arcana check in the absence of Ori. Yeah. I'm not bad with arcana. Could, can we... Can, is that something we can check to see if there's a some, how the water is imbued? Or the yeah, if the henge is actually actively casting or mm. magically imposing something. Yeah, yeah, make an arcana check. I think Gwendolyn would share with them the information that as I've been jumping on these, they they are so sturdy. It feels like they must go really deep down into the ground. Oh. Hmm. Interesting, because like in some of like the saunas and the the the, the spas you get in the big cities. Like, you know, there's certain racks and elements and things like that that can, like, you know, imbue the air around them or the, the water or whatever with, like, you know, minerals and stuff like that. Maybe there's some magical minerals going on around here. Yeah. It would explain why ta- Twain Tide tastes t- so good. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. It's true. We could check the plants to see if it's got the same effect as what we drank from the water. J- Juna, Juna investigates the water and is like, ah! got nothing <laughs> oh no i rolled a three. Oh no for a nine which i'm assuming comes to no avail <laughs> um what i will say with that is yeah whilst you're not sure whether or not it's the water itself whether or not it's the henge doing as especially as you're talking about the tea you sort of do realize that the water down there is running out into these tea fields like that's where you popped up <laughs> using the henge to make tea can you show us where you you popped out can we See this entrance. And where we ended up. Yeah. Yeah. Down down this way. Yeah, we sort of walk down. Mm-hmm. You find it because it's the one uh, sort of pond pool that's got bits floating about, bits of fish and worm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm, you should try the taste. Okay. And and little bits of floating vomit. Mm. Chunder. Oh, yeah. Just a greasy sheen on top of the water there. Yeah. David, are there any other ones like that around? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you know they're dotted here and there, like sort of like yeah, natural um, spots for the for the the understream to pop out. Can you do like a in- little investigation? You're saying like they're kind of built up with extra stone it work and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming it's just irrigation, but just in case there's any other magical sort of stuff going on. Oh yeah, yeah. You check yeah, check the foundations of each of these little yeah yeah. Just interested in the construction of it all. Um, what shall I, type of check shall I do? Investigation? Uh, investigation check, yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's another 10. A 10? We, you know, we're very average in We're really missing we're Orin. We're so average yeah. tonight. Really missing yeah. Orin right I now. Wonder, yeah, I wonder what it is. I wonder why those things are normally much higher. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Dave is like, whoa, I've got to lower that DC. Ooh, no. <laughs> Dial it down. Um, yeah, no, it's, 
they're pretty standard construction. You can tell that they've kind of yeah been built up to to create sort of little little pools, but also let it like you say irrigation types of things. And you can tell that some of the plants are being grown more in these pools, whereas some of them are being grown around the pools. But you can't see anything particularly magical about the way these things have been constructed. Gwendolyn's gonna take a tin cup and she's gonna drink some. Um, yeah, it just tastes like spring water. Oh, nothing too special. I don't feel anything particularly special about this. Maybe it's because you're not a magic user? Maybe. I'm gonna have a drink as well, David. Um, yeah, no, you don't. It, it's, it's very fresh water. Um, there is like a slight muddiness to it, but it's, it's, it's quite nice to drink. Uh, no extra magical effects that have, that the others have described. Oh, okay. Maybe it's not from like this pond, but like you have to like have the water. I don't know. From what you described, you you went you went down a stream through some vegetation into another stream, and then you came out of this pond. Yeah. Maybe it's the first stream that's got the power or whatever. Yeah. Maybe it has to be within the henge itself. Then. Oh yes, you had a sip from from that. The cup that we lowered down, didn't you? Yeah, closer to the to mm. the end itself. So what what are we getting from this though, guys? Like, what's the what's the what's the scoop? What's the? I th- I think it means that. What's the thing that's going to help us build a bigger picture? The machinery. How does it work? Oh yeah, I think we're we're learning that it's the the hinge the hinge's power into the water rather than the hinge being a tapping point. Okay. I suppose it gives us a bit more information about what the henges do, why they're important, they're mm. power-giving sources. Yeah. We've been talking about the henges giving power. If this water that's with the henges is giving you power, then the henge, the henge themselves are a power source. It, it means as well, if you're, you know, if, if you were to construct your own henge, say underground, you would have an unlimited amount of magic at your disposal. Yes. I would be interested to know if we took the water out of the middle and then took that water outside of the henge and drank it, whether it would still have the power, whether it is the location or the fact that we've got the water from the middle. Well, let's take a bunch to study anyway. Let's experiment. Is there a reason why maybe the the, uh, the uh, proto-henge was underwater as well, like in an under, underwater workshop? I think it's just because it was a good place to hide it, really. Who's going to think to look at the bottom of the lake? I suppose. Mm. That's true. Um, and the, the the Tillersham Henge had nothing to do with water, did it, David? Uh, it was surrounded by water. It was surrounded by water. Interesting. Mm. Mm. Maybe you have a point, Guy. <laughs> 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 like all the wa- like so like natural waterways work with the henges. And there's fighting over... Well, there's fighting in the barrier marshes. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I, we were back in... Um, where was the Faceless Footman? Where did we first meet them? Rostal. When we were back in Rostal and we were in the library, I was reading about the barrier marshes and how there's fighting over sacred places like this. Hmm. Perhaps they are fighting over a henge and a resource. Marshes are pretty watery. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's take some water as. Yeah, let's take some water out of the middle and see what happens if we take it outside of the henge, just because I feel like at least we can understand the way they work maybe a little bit more no i agreed do we, so if we've got like water skins and stuff like that can we use that those to kind of when we're sending them down rather than the cup because i feel like a water skin would um like get the water in it better for bringing it back up yeah 100 percent. yeah i'll say yeah you tie one down lower it it takes a like a little bit of a moment to try to get it like a couple of tries of bringing it up to try to fill it a bit more yeah um uh, but eventually yeah you sort of have one full water skin Try drinking some uh, in in the circle and out of it. Yeah, I'll take it outside of the henge and, and drink it there and see what happens. How like how many spell slots have people used would be my question. I've used four, two three level and two four level. I've got all mine back. Mm-hmm. I've used three, two four level and one first level. Nice. Okay, so yeah, Gwendolyn, when you try it, both like in, in the henge and out of the henge. You get key points back. Yeah, you do feel slightly more energetic. You feel like you've got sort of slight more of that 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 key focus. And yeah, Juno and Gaius as well. There doesn't seem to be a difference between drinking in the henge and drinking outside of the henge. And you even sort of like try it like slightly further off, further into the field. And and even that actually, 
each time you drink like a good couple of glugs, you feel this sort of magical energy, the power, as it were, within all of you, just sort of like solidify itself a little bit more. Hmm. To the point, I'm assuming, with all of this drinking of tea, that you, you all feel very rested and very healthy and very ready to go and, you know, win big fights and that. Yay, long rest. Do we do we feel like our hit points would go up or would we need to, like, go down some hit points to no, see? No, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not like a physical healing. It's very okay. much like a, an en- energy. Well, I can understand why the type of people who are trying to harness these powers are trying to harness these powers mm-hmm. this is a lot i'm 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 sort of torn between wanting to fill up all of our water skins and harness this power for ourselves in a small way and thinking that this is a very dangerous thing to exist i think we should take absolutely fill our water skins and have this water for ourselves mm. but also to offer to offer to add to your thought miss septhorn this is a relatively small henge yes and probably smaller and comparatively in power crow wanted a tillisham henge really badly and that was much larger than this one so i imagine that one has more potential to do more potent and varied things whereas this one seems to you know give us refreshing energy and power and considering how close we are to twain tide i guess it's quite uh important for their agriculture so uh this is a uh, a henge with a smaller, a good and healthy effect. Mm. Sorry, guys, because I'm just. What's the, uh, what's the next step then? I think we should leave here for now, unless there's anything else anyone wants to try. Well, Juna found out the information about where Pellegrin would be hidden with a really cool spell, and I feel like that could maybe be enhanced by being in this place. Perhaps you can do some diviney viney stuff i can but i need some flowers to be able to do it we're in a tea field does that count david can i try and do that yeah you look around and you know a lot of these flowers uh, a lot of these flowers a lot of these uh tea bushes are looking pretty healthy you think you could do they have flowers on them specific flowers um some of them have like smaller flowers and things but can i just make a flower check just i feel Uh, like that's not good to confirm that it would work for you absolutely but but, and and just and just to like check that none of them are like the flower oh have like seven petal flowers oh i see what you're saying yeah yeah it's an 18 i don't know if i i I think i added charisma yeah it's an 18 anyway yeah add charisma 23 yeah (laughs) for <laughs> 23 <laughs> yeah it's there's there's no seven petal flowers the flowers are beautiful and as you then start looking through you just get like almost like rubbing the tea leaves and things like they're they're really fresh obviously they've not had any treatment done to them at all at this point so it's just like mm. the like the freshest scent of these of these plants um but no seven petaled flowers um let's let's get a lot of flowers if you don't mind helping me no nope. don't mind at all Let's let's gather some flowers. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> the this this fate marked, well, fate marked four could do with some guidance from fate. I feel. I agree. Amazing. So all of you start picking tea leaves, um, and and little flowers that you find, and I'm assuming gathering them inside of the henge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And do you know, like, what pattern are you going to do this time? The same flower or like something different? I think she's going to do a flower, but this time it's going to have like nine petals. It's going to be a different design because it's in the henge. So mm, she's sort nice. of paying homage to the henge. Mm. And it will be a like more dusky colour, won't it, rather than all the different colours. Mm. So I think she goes, well, what, what, what kind of flower is this version of divination? Yeah, I love that. So yeah, it's almost like a, like a sort of thistly vibe. Yeah. Like a, yeah. And I suppose especially where it's not like made out of like like bouquets of flowers like you did last time like this is much more leaves and like bits of plant and thing it, like it almost has a slight sharpness to it yeah oh wonderful so yeah that takes that takes a little bit of time um i'll say i don't how long does the spell last or uh, take to cast uh it's one action yeah the casting time is one action so yeah it doesn't and it's yeah in- instantaneous it takes you it takes you yeah probably about half an hour for all of you to like grab enough plants and Juna to make this beautiful pattern. Um, is everybody going to stand inside of the henge as the spell is cast, or everybody else on the outside? 
I want to be inside. <laughs> Stand inside. <laughs> Does Gwen still believe she was part of the last spell? <laughs> yes, Gwendolyn <laughs> has, uh, believes that she's essential to this spell. Amazing. Do you know, is this dangerous? No, not at all. Yeah, what do we need to do? Yeah, can we help in any way? Yeah, let's all, let's all hold hands. Oh, yes, this will definitely help. Okay. It just intensifies the power. Well, there you go. We're, we're standing and we're holding hands. Okay. Like a bunch of idiots. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of negativity will will not be good for this spell, Gaius. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. Come on, Juna. Shake it out, Let's guys. The, Shake it out. <laughs> Let's get the juju flowing. Come on, everyone. And he will, like, start, like, moving his, like, shoulders back and forth and back and nice. forth and try and get them to do the same. Be like, Come on, folks. Let's do this. So so the rules are, just to clarify, you have to ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity rec- to occur within the next seven days. Hmm. I, I, I'm assuming that means I can't ask about a specific... Like, I can't ask, like, what do you do, Henge? Um, if it were tied to a time period, like, what are you doing right now, or... Yeah. You know, like, if you if, say, are you if, going to do this? If I this? were to draw magic from you tomorrow... Yeah, kind of a thing. What would happen? Yeah, that, uh, that you'd get more of an answer what for. Were the, what are the possibilities if I were to draw all of your magic from you tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you were to phrase it like that, say, you'd have more of a chance of an answer. She phrases yeah. it like that. <laughs> so what is it you ask? Uh, yeah, if, if I were... Yeah, if I were to return and fully and wholly use this henge for its intended purpose to its full maximum capacity what would happen yeah as you kind of like finish this question curiously whereas you last time you cast this spell that the plants started withering as they were giving their answers to you this time the very opposite thing happens Every single one of these shoots and leaves and little flowers that you've sort of put around you suddenly erupt into growth and start spreading and covering every single one of these nine stones of a henge. Um, To the point that, like, they're kind of, like, not in a dangerous way, but they are expanding and pushing all of you slightly out, slightly lifting you. Wow. And Juna, just the sort of the impression, the answer that you feel that you get is that if you were to use the full power of the henge, everything would grow. Oh no. Well, that's the incognito option gone. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, now you're kind of like surrounded by a very, very bushy henge. All of that previous feel of like people have walked through here loads, completely gone. This feels like a very natural, overgrown space wow so Gwendolyn what what would you read from this answer like wow lots of power I think oh no should I roll a dice that's <laughs> what I get from it <laughs> what did we do last Grace time Grace gets it <laughs> was it insight it was insight I think let's see yeah. what Gwendolyn gets <laughs> oh this is it's a five. Oh, so well. Gwendolyn's like I think that the hen just telling us to like sleep in this like um mossy bed and then like we'll probably like cocoon into something and we'll be like super strong is what I'm getting from it. I don't know, Juno, if you're getting the same thing. Very close. Very close. I think it's uh I think its power is boundless. And in that way, you are right. I knew it. I think its full power will just continue to grow and grow. So there we have it. Woo. Juno, can I ask you something? Do you have any clue about, like, where these henges came from? Like, who made this? Do I have any knowledge of that, Bebidi? No. Like, what could possibly give this power in this place? I don't know, but I, I could ask Ginger. Seeing as my magic feels boundless this evening. Yeah, do that. Do that. And mm. also ask her geographically, what's the nearest like human or physical feature? To where she actually is. <laughs> to like the named human or physical feature. I'm just curious. Mm. And if you wouldn't mind telling Kasula that I'm safe, that would also be good. We'll do Kasula first. Okay. Okay. Is that all right, David? Sure. <laughs> Again, it is very much the middle of the night, but go for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is the middle of the night. Boop, boop, boop. Well, 
Gwendolyn's not thinking about that. Cool. So yeah, first of all, Juna says, sorry. Oh no. Oh, yes, and yes. also mention the horses as well, just like to check that they've something's happened to them. Yeah. The hex probably own them now, but still. <laughs> Kasula, Gwen sent to message, we're fine. In kissing Beck, please look after the horses if you can. Lovely to see you. Love, Juna. There's a sense of, yeah, she's just been woken up. And she's like, it's like three in the morning. Uh, well, I'm glad you're safe. Had me a little worried when our tour was interrupted. Of course it was. <laughs> but I'll see what I can do about the horses. Juna takes a swig of water and regales it to Gwen. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say? She'll work it out. I was just thinking that where they're parked, she might not know, but she, I, she knew where we were going, really. Mm. Um, just to, just to like, whilst Juna is, like, this is sort of, I think she's had sort of three, four swigs of this water. Mm-hmm. Just would like to do whatever the check is. Like, is there, you know, we've we've seen what, like, doing too much time magic does to people is that like is there an effect that happens the more you drink this water like an adverse effect kind of thing Ooh, interesting drunk on energy i will say make make it like a constitution arcana check Eh? because like you're trying to sense whether or not like physically if any if there is a bad reaction to drinking this water right yeah so yeah like if, if you're proficient in arcana add that and then add your constitution to whatever the role is both as in like rather than intelligence mm-hmm. do your constitution and your proficiency bonus sweet if that makes sense yes that does make sense where is my proficiency bonus plus four plus four plus three so plus seven so that's 22 oh okay, very nice. good whilst you don't necessarily think there's an adverse effect uh, as such, you do feel like this this energy isn't going to last in the same way. Like as you're kind of like drinking and contemplating it, you feel like it's oh yeah, it's keeping you going, but you don't know like it doesn't feel as permanent actually as as natural as a as a full rest would. Okay. Hmm. Or to put it in like real world terms, you feel like you've had some caffeine. Mm. So the energy is there, but it's not, you know, and it's keeping you going, but it's... I'm going to crash at some point. <laughs> yeah, you get the sense that maybe, maybe it's, yeah, there's a, there's a finish point to it. Cool. Uh, it's just going to keep sending. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she is going to send a message to Ginger saying, uh, what was it that we were saying, Chris? Basically, like, what? Do you know anything about the origins of the henges, like, and maybe who created them? That's it. I think she's going to phrase it like she's answering the last message. Mm-hmm. Like, thanks. Uh, where exactly, actually, geographically are you? Question. Do you know where henges first started and or who first made them? Really need to know. 25 words. Nice. Also, I'm going to, like, softly uh, discuss that we call the water Henge Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, Ginger's voice sort of comes back to you. And again, that, that same constant feeling. If anything, it's got a slight, like, riding cadence to it. Um, as if she bison, is sat on the... Bison riding. Like, yeah, like a bison riding cadence. <laughs> but she says, just past a lovely place called Dewpoint. Dewpoint. Mm-hmm. Oh, she is making headway. Hinges, very old those. I turn to uh, old folk tales uh, and the such like. I can't think of any off me head. Ginger regales that and says she wasn't much use. <laughs> All right, it was worth a shot. Um, Ginger's making really good progress, Miss Septhorn. She's not that far. She's west of us. Where is Dewpoint? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's due west. So Dewpoint, it's, it's, yeah, it's like the furthest west you can get. Well, not the furthest west, but it's to the west of the Noble Pastures. Yeah. So again, she's still, especially on Bison back, uh, she's probably about, yeah, a week and a half away from you, like having slightly changed her trajectory. But actually, at least she's this side of the Iron Chain of the mountains. Mm. Yeah. 
She's making good progress. <laughs> Great. Yeah, bison riders. Well, folk tales. Folks live in the town. Maybe we go see if... Well, we can either sleep here and then go into the town tomorrow, or... I mean, it's nearly sunrise, but... Little rest. Go talk to people. I think it's important that we rest after drinking this water. Okay. I don't think it's going to sustain... I've got a feeling that it's not going to sustain us in the long term. I mean, I'm not going to lie... I am comfy in these plants. Should we stay up here? Let's do it. Makes no difference to me, sure. Do you want to do your security, Gwen? Yes. Yeah, Gwendolyn makes a security around them. Amazing. I think Juna thinks back as well to the fact that Ruana lived in a henge, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap, why haven't we asked Ruana or anything? Ruana's a dog. (laughs) No. (laughs) I mean, I'm assuming that Ruana is not sentient. Um, she seems as keen to learn more about it as the rest of you. So yeah, yeah, she doesn't know as much, like all that much beyond that she used to protect it. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Gwendolyn sort of makes her way around the henge, setting up the security. And you all cozy into various spots in this overgrown flora uh, and fauna in the middle of the henge, and that's where we're going to end the episode. Aww. And we all wake up and our eyebrows are just a little bit longer. (laughs) Yeah! All our hair grows... Oh, please let that happen. That would be cool. (laughs) Well, the security guard for the the tea fields have actually found us and like, Oi! (laughs) I mean, that's maybe the bigger issue you've got to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's tea field guards? You have been listening to... David Knight as your Dungeon Master. Ben Galpin as Orin. Chris Watts as Gaius. Daryl Bailey as Enkidu. Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn. And Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe, and follow us on all the social media. Thank you for listening to No Small Roles. Anon for now. Anon!